Okay, this is a 60-day review on the new king of my kitchen, which is the Ninja Foodie XL Pro air frying oven. I've got two versions here. One has a thermometer and one doesn't. And I'm going to go over with you on what I've learned about the thermometer and plus what I know about and the functions on this one. Just briefly what I've learned since I did my unboxing video. I'm also going to show you a little bit about how I've been cleaning it. And I've got some really neat ideas that's been working real well. And I'm going to try and touch on more than one. I've got several. <laughs> And plus the splatter shield, we're gonna we're gonna talk about it. I don't really know, you know, why they removed it, but we're, one of one of these ovens has it, and one of them doesn't. So we're gonna talk about it. But the other reason is I've been getting a lot of questions because there's a video out there that shows these ovens missing their temp by like 50 or 60 degrees. In other words, they set it to 450, and it only goes to less than 400. Well, that right there is two thermometers in an ice bath and that we're going to make sure they are, that's how you calibrate them. We're going to make, make sure they're close to 32 degrees, and I've got it set up right here on my tablet. We're going to set both of these to 450 degrees and see how well they get. Now, I ran it a little bit today, but I'm going to do it right. This time, we're going to put them right in the middle of the oven. I'm going to like clamp them down, and we're going to see exactly how it does. I'm John Sanders. I'm also known as Jelly007. Let's uh, get this started. Okay, so one of the first things I wanted to go over was cleaning it. I get a lot of questions on it. And be honest with you, most of the time, this right here, it's just a sponge with like a dishcloth material on one side that I put mild dish detergent and water on, and I wring it out real well. And then, of course, I unplug the oven before I reach my hand in there with anything, especially with something with water. But anyhow, I unplug it, and then I just wipe it down. And pretty much, I ain't going to say after every use, but not not much more than that. I mean, much not much less than that. The next thing is this right here. I like this, and I'm not, it's not just on these I use this stuff on. I use it on my, on my Ninja Grill and everything else. But I cut off a piece where you're not trying to reach in there with a big wad of stuff. And this way you just got a little patch that you're in there and you can kind of get your fingers on it and you kind of get the you kind of get the idea. There's who it's made by. It's Scotch Bride, and, and I got a couple of items that are, but take my word, nobody sponsoring me. Nobody, nothing you see here. It says all nothing but John. Uh, let's see, we'll talk about this right here. That's another Scotch Bride item, but it I, I ain't gonna say it works good on some items, but it's this right here. I mean, it is a fairly rough material, but it, it works okay on some things. <clears throat> this right here is what I've used a bunch. It is the Magic Eraser, and I'm sure you've heard of them. And, uh, but what I do with them, I'll say this, because they destroy real easy. I'm almost reluctant to advise people using them, because if you get them hung on anything, especially in a grill or anything, or in an oven or anywhere, it, it tears them apart. Well, what I do is I at least cut them in half, and then I'm working with a lot less, because if you're trying to scrub with this, you're going to get this hung, and it's going to tear. But here's the latest thing, and I've only, i got to find a bag again. And I've only used this one time, but I think I'm going to like it a lot, and it, it is another uh, Mr. Clean Magic Eraser. But it's made... And the reason I bought it was for a mop I have. This snaps on the end of it. Well, it's already the size you need, and it seems to be holding up. But again, you can see I haven't used it much, but I got a feeling this is what I'm going to. But you have to find it kind of in the specialty section. It comes two of the pack, and it's like I said, it's made for that mop right there, which I have that mop. I like it too. <laughs> I spray it out with a water hose <laughs> and then walk in here and mop. Uh, I'm going to get off of that part, and we're going to move to maybe looking at the probe on this one, or maybe, but well, I'll, I'll come up with something. Here's the probe. I may go over that, because there's a lot to know about it, but the main thing I want to do here is get this test done. I, I want to know myself, because I've told a lot of people about this oven, and the worst thing I would hate, the bother me the most, is to steer somebody wrong. I promise you, you've seen everything I've cooked in this thing, and it's beautiful every time. I hadn't had a bad thing come out, but I've never put a test at 450 degrees, and that's what we're doing, and I'll be back. All right, before we started this temperature test, I did want to touch on this splatter shield, they call it. And the reason is, on the newer models, which this one is, I've, I got this one after I got this one. And for whatever reason, it looks to me like Ninja just decided to remove the splatter shield from the design. Now, it, this one, 
the manual says never run it without this. So I'm, I'm not suggesting and I'm not going to ever run it without it. It's, until Ninja tells me it's okay to take that out and run it without it, I'm not going to. So I'm not suggesting you do that in any way, shape, form, or fashion because it, it, it easily states, it says, don't run it without it. But the thing is, I have no idea why they did it. But a lot of people are wondering if it's a mistake when they get their oven. So I wanted to show you. You can see there's no holes or anything there. It's, it's not there. Neither are the, the fastening hardware. Well, if you look on the artwork, now I've already thrown the box that this one came in away, so I can't compare it. But if you look at this artwork or this picture, you can see it's not there in that picture. It's not in this one. It's not there. It's not in this one or any of these. So for whatever reason, they removed it. I, I don't really, you know, I, don't, I ain't gonna say I care. I don't care why, <laughs> but they didn't, they haven't addressed it, or as far as I know, they haven't. So as like I said, that I will continue to run that one with it in there, and this one don't have to worry about because it, it doesn't have it. Now, one other thing I want to say is because a lot of times you see me open it and my handle hitting right here. Well, in a normal cabinet situation, this is the way it will be. Your, your handle won't hit your cabinet. It, it, it extends past it and opens and clears that. So just so you wanted, in just case you wanted to know. But right now, the next thing we are doing is the 450 degree temp test. Let's do that. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is just kind of show you what I've found with calibrating to 32 degrees and let you see about where they are. And you can see it bounces around a good bit. It's, I've had it a while. It's, it's eye grill. Uh, it, it, it works perfectly, though. I have no complaints with it. Here's one of the probes, which is right here in this, in this cup of ice water. And here's the other. One of them right now is reading 32, and the other one is reading... 34. So, I mean, you can give or take there a little bit. They're, they probably moved four or five degrees total. I mean, if you look at the graph right here, you can see what they've done. I mean, they're not exact and they're not a really high end product, but it, it'll do for what we're doing, I believe. All right, we're ready. Now, I had to, I started it and had to stop it because one of my probes fell. So, I got a little temp on the oven and I'm not sure my preheat is going to be accurate but here's the thing about preheat and it's kind of a known issue with this oven or a known fact it's not an issue or it's not to me i rarely run preheat on a air frying recipe i mean some i do but rarely but what i'm getting at is this oven calls preheat or what it does it preheats this oven but it does not go to your set temperature it's not going we're going to have this set to 450 when it says preheat is done, it will be nowhere near 450. And, and I don't have a problem with that. Now, if some recipes I might, but I know enough, I know enough about the oven that I'm going to have to run it for a little while and let it come to the 450 degree or whatever mark I'm looking for because preheat's really just knocking the chill off of the oven, if you ask me. It is heating it, it is preheating it, but it's not preheating as you've probably known before. Again, I don't have a problem with it, but I, I know it. And if you need a recipe, if you have a recipe that needs preheating, you need to know it too and just account for it. So, to the best of my ability, both of those probes are, the tips of them are dead center of this oven, as you can see right there. I've got them pretty much locked down. <laughs> thought I didn't want to go too, but this one flopped off, so I had to start over. And that's why you see 84 right there. So I'm going to ease this door, this door shut. Uh-oh, I still had it on dehydrate. I turned it on dehydrate to help cool it down from where I was. I'm going to turn that one off too. Now, I'm going to set the uh, the temps to whole roast. So, you, as you know, and maybe you don't, so maybe this will be a good thing. You just go through functions. I hit whole roast. Um, 45 minutes at 450 degrees. Everything's good there. I'm still on dehydrate. I'm going to move it to... Whole roast, I'm at 45 minutes, 450 degrees there. Now I'm going to hit start and start. And uh, it does say it's preheating, but again, that's that's not accurate because I just ran it for probably four minutes before it cut off. And like I said, I put it on dehydrate to 85 degrees to cool the oven down, and it seemed to work okay. But we're off and running, and... Uh, We'll have a chart right here to see just how well it does, how fast it gets to 450, which I'm expecting probably 10 minutes or so. It takes it a while to get completely there. 
but mainly we're going to see if it makes it to 450 and just how long it takes. So I'll be back. Okay, so for the record, pretty much identical, even though I had ran a little heat in it. They both hit at the same time, preheat. One's at 144, which is this oven, and one's at, well now it's at 144, and that is this oven. In other words, this is the oven on the left, and this is the oven on the right. Okay, so I'm going to call that 450. We're two degrees away at eight minutes. So one thing you could learn from this is that if you do want 450 degrees, you need to wait about eight minutes after, oh, I didn't mean to do that, after it hits preheat, and it did, it made it to 448, and then it turned around because now the element is evidently off, and it's going back down. But I'll take 448. That's two degrees away, and that could be my thermometer. And not to mention, so this is 462, and that's that oven. I kind of missed that for a second. Is it still going up? Yep. Now it's going down. There we go. It made 463. And we're going to have a chart. All right, right quick, just past the 10 minute mark. So that means the oven's been running for 35 minutes. And I kind of want to give you an idea of what I call the swing or, or the window of the upper and the lower number uh, the oven goes to. In other words, it's calling for 450. So we're going to see how close it gets to 450 right here after 35 minutes of, 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 uh, of running. And it's been going to 448, but we'll see. And then we'll see how low it goes once it turns around. And uh, we'll have an idea of what, I, again, the swing, I call it. And it's going to stop right there, I believe. But it's been going to 448. But anyhow, 445. All right, now, that's plenty close enough. And again, that 5 degrees could be my device. So from 445, it's going to fall to a number and then turn around again. And, and I'll be honest with you, my, I think it's $3,000 oven I got in there. I don't think it keeps as close of numbers as I've saw here. So we're on the way down from 445. I have to keep saying it or I'll forget. <laughs> and uh, it's very confusing. I was trying to watch both of them while I go at the 15 minute mark, but you would not want to hear that description. I, it was hard to track. <laughs> so from 445, we're at 428. And all we're doing is watching for it to turn around and start back up. So that's all we're going to do. I'm just going to let it go till it does that. And it may have at 425. There it goes. So we're talking about a 20 degree window. That is impressive. That means you're keeping whatever's in that oven or that oven, that chamber, within 20 degrees of what you're calling for. I mean, from upper and lower, and that's excellent, I think. But anyhow, I'm going to let it all the way completely cut off and finish, and then we'll look at charts and uh, discuss a few other things about the oven and uh, move on. We'll be back. Okay, so for the record, we're coming up on the end of the 45 minutes at 4.50. Both of them pretty much cut off at the same time. And uh, we've got the charts now to go by and look at. But you saw what it did. Uh, it, it passed with flying colors, if you ask me. All right, right here's our chart right quick. Just we'll look at it really quick. But here's this oven right here. Here's what happened. And I'll bring the graph up. There's where I had it in the 32-degree bath. And you can see it, it, it stayed really close right there. Here's where I actually started both ovens up. And I don't know if I'll put this part on the video or not, but the clip or the probe fell in the other one, so I had to shut the oven back down, so that's what that's about, but that's all that was, and here's where I restarted it, and that's why it had a little 80 degree temp on it or whatever, but you can see right here, that is really good. There's 500, there's 400. You saw the temps, they were 450, 460, whatever, you know, and it was turning around, and then there's your ups and downs, Anywhere from, I'd say, these peaks right here were probably the 450, 445 or so. And then the lower one was the 420 or whatever, you know, 20, 20 25 degree window. Uh, I have no complaints, and I mean none with that. That is absolutely perfect. Again, that's the oven on the left. 
right quick. I'll show you the oven on the right. Here's the graph. Same thing, the 32 degree bath, the, where I turned it on, the thing fell, the probe fell, was spread it out a little bit. Same thing, 500, 400, there is the chart. So I don't know how you could ask for much better than that. I mean, within five degrees, which could easily be this. I mean, it, it's not a professional, it's a, it's a great unit, don't get me wrong, I love it, I've had it for years. I usually use my wireless now, but I couldn't do that with this test because of the temps, and that's another story. But Now, I will say this, one thing about it, and I've said this in other videos, especially at this 450 degrees, this cabinet gets hot. You do not want to put your hand on it or say have a anything laid on top of it, a loaf of bread for sure, or anything. You don't want anything on top of it because it's hot. It's hot right now, and it's been off for a few minutes. Uh, but it, it, the manual says one inch clearance on all sides all the way around, or that's what I've read. You, I mean, you still need to read your own manual. <laughs> I'm never trying to replace the manual, but that's what I understood it to say. I understood it to say one inch clearance all the way around, front and back. And uh, again, no, it, it, I'm not going to tell you no story there. That, that thing's hot. It's, it's pretty warm. But all toaster ovens I've ever had, they get hot on the sides. You're not supposed to touch them. It's common sense. <laughs> the probe. Uh, it's probably best to watch one of the videos where I use it. It's a, it'll be a lot more explanatory to see it in use instead of me trying to tell you what it does, but it's obvious. You put it in, when it hits the temp you set it to, it turns the oven off. And uh, a really neat feature, one of the only things that's kind of people might not know maybe is say like this right here. If you want to see what the temp of this is at any time it's plugged in, you hold down this manual button for three seconds and you'll see it switch to current right there. See if you can see what I'm, it says current and like right now it's 75 degrees. So that's about, that's about the gist of it. There's a couple of other things I can show you, but again, it would be best to show you while I'm cooking because you can switch between what your oven set to and what this reads by doing something similar. Anyhow, I hope y'all got something from this and, uh, I lo I'm loving this oven, I, and, and I was really spooked when I saw the video, and I'm not saying anybody's doing anything wrong, it's just it spooked me because I didn't want it to be 50 degrees off after I've bragged on it so much. But it, I, it's a big oven. It's, it, it wouldn't have shocked me if it had been off a little bit. It's, it's large. It's, it's gonna, it takes a lot of air. It, it don't air fry as fast as, say, a, a small air frying oven because... It's, it's big. It's a lot more cubic feet. That's why you can do a turkey, a 13-pound turkey or a, or a prime rib or all the other stuff I've done in it. Y'all have seen it. It does. I've been impressed. I'm going to let y'all go, and we'll get this finished. I love y'all all. Come back to see me. Hey, wait a minute. Don't forget this part. If you saw something here you like, hit me with a thumbs up. Love y'all. Bye-bye.